Beatrice Olumense is a seasoned career professional. Uh, I've worked in, I think for over 20 years in different uh, environments, uh, global environments, emerging markets, and startup scenarios for blue chip organizations um, and multinationals. I am an avid traveler. I've been to 21 countries all over the world, uh, Americas, Europe, Asia, and of course, all around Africa, and I'm a sickle cell warrior. My sickle cell journey has been something, I say it's a daily journey for every sickle, um, because you'll find that through life, your symptoms change as you grow. When I was younger, my lips would shiver. That's how I would know. They, they just shiver and go numb. That's how I'd know that, you know, I'm not feeling well. Um, as I got older, it became my tummy aches that would lead to, you know, the pains. Um, and right now, it's pretty much my shin that notifies me that something is going on. I am very, very lucky um, to have, I've had a mother who probably searched, um, you know, every nook and cranny for whatever medication was available um, to ensure that she sort of supported um, our journey. We're three, so we're four kids. Three of us have sickle cell. Um, one is lucky because he's SC, so he doesn't get sick all the time. But my sister and I, you know, we go through this constantly. Um, you know, she has three beautiful kids now and obviously they're all well. Uh, none of them has sickle cell. Now, when you start out in life, obviously, you know, you rely very heavily on your parents. Um, and growing up, obviously, as a sickle cell patient, my parents um, cared very much for us and were always very protective. Uh, but then, leaving um, secondary school, I uh, got to a point where it was then time to go to university. Um, and unfortunately, at that point in time, I had two parents who were out of work. My mother had just, um, you know, been retired from the state secret service, and my father, who had been, a, you know, a, a business professional, had also just left his business to start, um, left his career to start a business. Now, obviously, that put a lot of financial tension on us um, as a family, um, and I remember thinking about how I was going to afford going to school. Um, I was part of the Catholic youth organization in church at the time, and we had been talking uh, about it. And our leader at that point in time um, had actually talked to a few close friends of hers, of, of course, very happy that, you know, I was going to go to the university. So I met with one of her friends, um, and she was talking to me. And then, you know, I just murmured and said, well, I may not go. And she said, you know, what exactly was that about? And I said, well, you know, this is the situation. I can't afford to go to um, university because this is going on in my family. Um, and she said, okay, you know, she gave me a time and an appointment and said, come over to, um, you know, her house. So I decided to go. My older brother and I, of course, were going into the university at the time. She had asked us to come. Um, and I remember, you know, going to her house that day um, and got to the gate and obviously, you know, rang the bell. And I remembered looking through the gate that I could see her, um, you know, through the curtains. And she had shut the curtain blind after seeing who was at the gate. Um, but then suddenly her help had come to the gate and just said, Madame is not at home. That, for me, was the biggest disappointment because at that point in time, that was my only hope to actually going to school. I remember I didn't even have enough transport money to go, you know, back home. Um, my friend lived not too far away, and my brother and I walked to her house, sat there for a bit, um, and we realized, okay, so her mother had given us some money. We walked uh, the other rest of the way home because it only carried us as much. So um, my brother and I had to walk the rest of the way home. I uh, got home, uh, I remember I, I was just very angry um, and disappointed. Um, my father wanted to have a conversation, but 
I think the first couple of days after that, I didn't want to speak to anybody. Um, eventually, you know, when I calmed down, you know, and my dad was like, look, what are you going to do now? Let's just sit and have, you know, the conversation. And I remember my father saying, look, it can't be that expensive, right? I'm sure that there's other ways. Um, I think by the time we got to the second year, it had become much harder, um, mainly because you're now, I was in the sciences. Um, so clearly you needed a lot of money either for something or the other. Um, and my brother had to actually work full time. He was a cashier and, and then go to school full time. Um, so one evening we were sitting just outside, standing just outside my room. And we both looked at each other and my brother said to me, I think I'm going to drop out and just support you through school. And at that point, I'm like, if you drop out, then I drop out. Like, it just doesn't make sense um, for us to, to sort of forfeit the goal. We have to do this together. Um, and the reason why I held on to that was, unfortunately, I'd lost two of my very close friends just that year. Um, and it felt like a very lonely journey. Sorry, excuse me. I had lost Agatha and John by then, so it felt like a lonely journey doing, doing education without, you know, your close friends um, and having to do it without a brother as well. Um, and then luckily, I think towards the end of that year, I met, I met my best friend, William. Um, she knew how I was struggling um, and then she decided, you know what, why don't you come and live with me? Um, at least, you know, we'll come to school together. I'll cover your food, I'll cover um, certain things. And then whatever I had, I used, um, you know, to pay for um, my school materials. Um, so that would be sort of um, the journey till I then got to my final year. Um, I remember I had to do my thesis in ecotoxicology and it was going to cost about 15000 um to buy just the materials. Um, and I, I didn't know what to do at that point in time. Um, I had actually met a very interesting uh, friend of mine through a family friend. Um, LBO and he, you know I decided okay look I'm just gonna go um, and just sort of ask if he could assist it was it was so funny he said okay let's go to the casino I have 5,000 let's try and see if we can win the rest um, so went with his friends that evening um, to the casino um, and then you know we got to 14,000 he said a wise man leaves before he loses all his money so walked out of there at least with 14,000 um, and then that was how I was able to at least do the science exercise. Um, and then I remember one day getting very, very sick. Um, I had a crisis. Um, and for some reason, at, at this point in time, we had actually moved uh, because my parents couldn't afford to live where we were. My uncle had asked us to move in, um, move into his BQ. Um, so we couldn't afford um, to rent, so my uncle had asked, um, you know, us to move to his BQ at the time. It was a, a very small sort of rundown BQ, but we sort of made it um, our own. It was a one-bedroom space, and all six of us um, had to sort of stay in there. Um, and then when I got very sick, um, you know, working one day at Newton and David. Uh, my friend had kept me at home and said, look, why don't, you know, you just quit? This is obviously a bit too much for you. Um, you're working till 10, 11 at night, sometimes doing three projects um, at the same time. And then I remember one day coming home, I was very sad. And then my father came um, around and said, hey, I need to see you. 
and he brought out this newspaper um, and said to me, oh, there's a new, you know, technology companies are just starting up. Um, Econet is looking for people. And I thought to him, I'm like, what the heck do I know about technology? My father said, exactly, what the heck does anybody know? You know, why don't you just join them? Everybody's going to be learning at the same time. Um, so I went and then obviously uh, did the interview. And, and I would say the rest is history because um, that my, my journey in technology um, has really been amazing. I've worked for some of the best businesses, um, you know, in the, in the world. Generally, I think life has been much better. Uh, life has really, really been, um, you know, what I, I actually believed it would be at the end of the day. The first thing I, I realized is that li life is going to get real, right? Whether or not you're ready. You have to decide whether you want to participate, how you want to own your journey, or you're going to drift through life. Um, and then the second part of me was, your solution doesn't always come in the package you expect it to. The most important thing for me was articulating what the problem is, socializing it with people who are around me, because at the end of the day, your resources are actually closer than you believe they are. I'm Beatrice Olumense. I'm a seasoned business, marketing and technology executive, and this is my first.